South Pacific, American fighting men smashing their way ashore against Jap resistance. In North Africa, American tank and anti-tank units clashing with Nazi armor. American bombers pounding enemy bases in Germany, Italy, occupied Europe. On battlefields all over the world, American soldiers fighting to determine this nation's destiny. To win final victory, more and more fighting men are needed. To train, equip, and get these men to the front is the task of the Army's Chief of Staff, General George C. Marshall. Conservation of manpower is a matter of first importance. The Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was organized to assist in meeting this need by releasing soldiers from non-combat duties. These women are to take over the jobs of soldiers behind the lines and here at home. Already they are doing this in a very fine manner. The Corps is a most important element of the Army, and I personally am intensely interested in its rapid development in strength as well as in training. Mrs. Ovita Culp Hobby taking the oath of office as director of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps. The Secretary of War appointed her on May 16, 1942, to organize, train, and command a force of women to take the places of men behind the lines. A big order, already partially filled. Thousands of WACs, trained and disciplined the Army way, are now on duty all over this country and overseas. But thousands more are needed. Women from all walks of life, sales girls, industrial workers, librarians, housewives, entertainers, office workers, executives, designers, teachers, college women, women of all races, all creeds, American women. In our pioneer days, women held the powder horn for their fighting men. Today, they are joining the WAC. Birth certificate? Dependents? None. Do any job assigned? Just so long as I'll be of use. Good. Down the hall for your mental alertness test, please. Gee, these quiz kid things really throw me. I'm a sales girl, not a brain trust. You'll do okay. These things just show how quick you can think, not how much you know. No. Please, no talking. 120 pounds. Right for your height and age. Next, please. Katherine Johnson. 162 pounds. Sorry, 10 pounds overweight. But it's just a few pounds, Doctor. Well, we give you the benefit of 15 pounds one way or the other, Mrs. Johnson. You're still overweight. Take off those extra pounds and try again. I can have another chance? Yes. Men folks in the Army? Two sons. For those who meet the enlistment requirements, the oath of allegiance. And I do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America. And that I will serve them honestly and faithfully against all their enemies whomsoever. And that I will serve them honestly and faithfully against all their enemies whomsoever. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. That I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to the regulations of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps and the Articles of War. According to the regulations of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps and the Articles of War. More recruits arriving every day for WAC training at Des Moines, Daytona, Oglethorpe, Devons, Polk, and other centers. More women to be trained, more women to become efficient soldiers behind the soldiers at the front. It won't be too easy. These women will have to make many adjustments to new homes, new work, new clothes. But they'll gain much. Friendships they might never have made in civilian life. Fun, fellowship. Most of all, the knowledge that they are doing a vital job and doing it well. Gee, they're smooth. How do they get that way? Oh, good sergeants and good officers. Did you learn that in college? No, from a book. Officer's Guide. Are you aiming to be an officer someday? I can dream, can't I? This is Johnson. Hello. Johnson and Streamline, too. How did you do? Oh, don't ask, child. Don't ask. Supplies for the new arrivals. Everything uniform, from underwear to overcoats. Greatest care is taken to fit shoes scientifically. Uniforms are fitted carefully, fitted neatly. 
measures to safeguard the health of the new WAC. The first bewildering days over, the new recruits settle down to army routine. 6 a.m. doesn't seem too early when there's so much to learn, so much to do. In fact, most of them get a running start on the whistle. Well, up and through, then down and through. I think this is it right here. <laughs> it's perfect. How do you like it? Very GI. GI, what's that? A government issue. Anything according to regulation. Very army. GI? Oh, no insignia. Oh, gee. Who's this palace? Palace Athena. Goddess of victory and wisdom. Victory and wisdom? Chow, army style. Good food and plenty of it. What you do here is take tests, millions of them. Well, they have to classify you, dear. Find out what you can do best. I told him I'm a jalopy expert. I bet I'm a typist till the day I die. Mm. Well, the things I do best to raise children and cook. Well, I think they'll let you cook. The civilians of yesterday now whack auxiliaries or privates. Still a bit awkward, but learning fast. Developing on drill areas the coordination and discipline needed in the Army. Cadence! Count! One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, gosh. By the right flank, march! Forward, halt! One, two. At ease. Jones, don't you know the difference between left and right? Well, my hands do, but my feet don't. Well, unfortunately, in this army, we march on our feet. So educate yours. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me ma'am, I'm a sergeant. And uh, you've graduated from the Girl Scouts now. The army hand salute is given with the upper arm parallel to the ground, the forearm at a 45 degree angle. Thumb is parallel to the fingers, which are extended with the tips touching the brim of the headpiece. Very good. Save it for the officers. Attention! With practice, they improve, become trim, neat, military. But there's more to learn than snappy footwork. Training the Army way to do jobs the Army way now begins. Five intensive weeks of basic training, including the first week of processing and orientation, instruction in military procedure, classwork, study and practice, conditioning. But it isn't all work. There's time out to relax and have fun. Time for shopping, cokes, and gab fest in the post exchanges. For mail from home. For get togethers with friends and dates in the service clubs. And for visitors on Sundays when guests are welcome. Finally, the end of the training period, the beginning of new careers. Friends say goodbye while they polish up for final review. Look at that, the gruesome twosome. <laughs> Shine them good, chum. Tomorrow's the last day they strut down this field. It's funny, after all these weeks together. We'll be together again. Yeah, but you and Johnson will be officers. Imagine you two saluting us. Who wants a Coke? You treating? Treating nothing. Everybody buys their own. And drinks their own, too. Well, run along, you three. I'll stay and finish up. Thanks, Captain. Wax on review. Basic training finished for another class. Wax, fit, alert, proud of their corps, prepared for the next big step in their new life, ready to serve with the Army, to do the jobs the Army thinks they do best. Some to officers' training school. Commissions for those who qualify, then on to field command or further training at the great army schools for officers. Under army direction, WAC officers are responsible for the discipline, welfare, and leadership of their corps. 
some auxiliaries to specialist schools where many learn entirely new trades. Administrative. Motor transport, where women have proved their ability to maintain and repair cars and trucks. They're good drivers and mechanics. Trained dietitians handle army rations. Cooks and baker schools, where everyone takes her turn at KP, but observe the modern potato peeler. Radio operation and repair, requiring delicate precision work at which women are so adept. Switchboard operation, another job at which women excel. From training centers and specialist schools to every part of the United States to take over permanent assignments. Wax on the move, into the field, all of them, to take over the duties for which they have been trained. Self-reliant, self-sustaining units, trained to settle quickly in new quarters to get down to their job without delay. Some go overseas, anywhere the army may want them, to take over vital jobs behind the lines. North Africa and the first overseas detachment of wax. Wherever they are, wax on the job, releasing soldiers, doing confidential administrative work that can only be handled by army personnel, drawing military maps, charts, graphs, plans, serving as dispatchers for various branches of the army. Developing secret film in the army photographic laboratories, assisting in army pharmacies, serving as pigeoneers for carrier pigeons in the great army communications field. As radio operators who are highly skilled, issuing clothing in quartermaster warehouses, working in army offices at various administrative activities in the army post office, fingerprinting, collecting their rations at the army commissary, replacing soldiers at switchboards. In army motor pools, in these and many other fields taking over important jobs for the army, through these replacements playing a vital role in winning the war. Wax in mounting thousands. America's women soldiers, trained, disciplined, fulfilling the purpose for which their corps was created. Releasing these men and countless others for combat duty. Putting soldiers on the battlefields to win final victory. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.